the release of The Punisher, we are now six TV shows into the Marvel Netflix universe, and that means it's time to stop and rank all six shows from the worst to the best, and today we're going to do that in under five minutes. Now, before I get started, be sure to put your ranking down below in the comment section. Tell me which ones you love, which ones you hate, why you love them, why you hate them, and let's have a nice, lively discussion. And with that said, let's get started. Coming in at number six is going to be Iron Fist. Now, I wasn't very familiar with the character, so I was pretty excited to see what the Netflix Marvel Universe could do with this character and then the first episode happened and it was bad and it was awkward and it didn't get any better for about four episodes and the plot kind of kicked in about episode five and you got some cool mythology about the hand there were some cool fight scenes in there at times but at best it was disappointing the lead actor can't really carry the show and the character's written in such a way to be so whiny that he doesn't come off heroic his powers are underutilized and it just makes for a show that does not need to exist. Coming in at number five is going to be Luke Cage. Now, I loved the first half of this season. It was cool. It was different. I loved the setting of it, the music, the ambiance, everything they were going for to show a different type of hero. Then something happens around episode seven where one character is written out of the show. And if you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. And it just the quality drops. It gets a lot campier and it just loses all of its momentum. And so if the first second half of the season was as strong as the first half, it probably would have been top two for me. It was that good. And then the second half is that bad that it comes in fifth place for me. Coming in at number four is going to be Jessica Jones. And another interesting character to put in this universe in that she's not really a hero, even though she's good and she has superpowers, but she's so broken by what's been done to her and what she's done. It just makes for an interesting character study. And I love the private and eye side of things where she's investigating things, the people around her, that she's kind of a very unpleasant person, but very charming at the same time. Where the season kind of loses a little bit for me is it goes so deep into the kill grave and that is so drawn out that it lost me a little bit. I wish there would have been a little bit more of the private eye standalone type episodes in the mythology that they were building. But all in all, just another very cool show with some great performances throughout. Coming in at third place is going to be The Defenders. Now, I was hoping this show was going to be my number one pick, but the first episode kind of meanders and was a little bit too slow and the season's never as great as it should be. But once the season gets going. There's some great action. Every character gets an iconic moment. They get a funny joke. The rapport between the defenders is really great. It elevates characters like Iron Fist who aren't very good in general, but they work well in the group dynamic. So all in all, a very solid season, a good, but not quite great joining together of all these shows together. At number two, we've got the Punisher. John Bernthal's take on the character has given so much depth and emotion to a character that is so often just kind of come off as the shoot 'em up vengeance guy. Here the show kind of digs in deep into the government conspiracy about what happened to his family, his past, and what made him br very broken as a person. And in that, it can come off kind of like the show Homeland. is almost a political thriller at times, but it still has the brutal action, the vengeance, the lack of mercy that you come to expect from the Punisher. There's some great standalone episodes in there as well with kind of different perspective. All in all, another great addition showing off why John Bernthal is one of these great great actors and showing how the Marvel Netflix universe can take a character that hasn't been handled right in the past and given us a great rendition. But coming in in first place is going to be Daredevil. Now this show right out of the gate just kind of blew me away. The fight choreography and how the fights are shot are incredible. Each of the seasons have given us one of these extended long take fight scenes that are some of the best fight scenes, not just on television, but filmed in the years that they were were put out. Beyond that, the cast is just incredible when they're getting Vincent D'Onofrio, those types of actors to be the villains on the show while also filling in all the roles with these kind of character actors that do phenomenal jobs. The dialogue is so crisp, giving these character moments so much more depth than you would expect from a show about a blind guy that fights people at nighttime. All in all, this is a show that just really wowed me from the get-go, from the first episode to the last episode. I have loved Daredevil. So so there you have it. That's my ranking of all six TV shows in the Marvel Netflix universe. Be sure to put your ranking down below in the comments section. With that said, if you're new to my channel, please consider clicking that subscribe button. I do movie reviews, TV reviews, and ranking videos like the one that you're watching right now. But the key thing is I don't want to just talk about movies and TV. I want to talk about movies and TV with you. So please join me in the comments section. Give me your ranking of the seasons. Let's have a lively discussion. And thank you so much for watching.